Hello and welcome to our channel. Complete blood count is one of the most commonly requested blood test. It is used for so many different reasons, but commonly being used for detection of anemia by looking at hemoglobin level, in infections to look for change in white cell counts, and in bleeding disorders to look for presence or absence of thrombocytopenia. When we come across anemia, we tend to look for the red cell indices, like mean corpuscular volume or MCV, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, that is MCH, and mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, or MCHC. These indices help us classify anemia as microcytic, macrocytic or normocytic, and whether the cell are hypochromic or normochromic. This is great till this point, but surprisingly, most of us miss to look at the magical index which is red cell distribution width or RDW. This is the most underutilized and underrated tool in the evaluation of red cell disorders or anemia. Let's see in this video, what is RDW, how it is measured, and how does it help us in interpretation of anemias. So, let's get into it. Red cell distribution width is done as a part of a complete blood count. It measures variation in red blood cell size, or red cell volume. It becomes elevated if there is variation in red cell size. If RDW is elevated in the CBC result, anisocytosis is expected on peripheral blood smear review. Besides anisocytosis, RDW is also elevated if there is presence of two red cell population, for example diamorphic blood picture, like seen in sideroblastic anemia and in mixed deficiency anemia. How other RBC indices are different from RDW? Other indices like MCV, MCH, and MCHC reflect average values and may not adequately reflect RBC size or volume variation. It means that, when mixed RBC or diamorphic RBC population is present, these indices just represent the average values. And, these may be altogether normal, not giving any clue about the presence of varied size red cell population. How is red cell distribution width notified in test report? And what are the normal values? Depending on the types of hematology analyzer, RDW can be reported statistically as coefficient of variation, or RDWCV, and or standard deviation, or RDWSD. RDWSD is an actual measurement of the width of the red cell size distribution histogram. It is measured by calculating the width of histogram in femtoliters at 20% height level of this red cell size distribution histogram. RDWSD is therefore not influenced by the average RBC size. RDWCV, on the other hand, is calculated by dividing one standard deviation width of histogram by the MCV times 100. It is expressed as percentage. Don't worry, machine will automatically calculate this for you. Since RDWCV is mathematically derived from MCV, it is therefore affected by the average RBC size. Now coming to, what are the reference values? Reference ranges of RDW may vary depending on the individual laboratory and patient's age. RDWSD reference range is from 39 to 46 femtoliters. And RDWCV normal range is 11.6 to 14.6% in adults. What are the different utilities of RDW? RDW is used along with other red blood cell indices, especially MCV, to help determine the causes of anemia. RDW help in early detection of nutritional deficiencies, such as iron, folate, or vitamin B12. This is because other red cell indices, that is MCV, MCH, etc., are normal in early nutritional deficiencies, while RDW becomes elevated. Therefore, a high RDW provide a clue for an early diagnosis of these deficiencies. If MCV is low, it aids in distinguishing between uncomplicated iron deficiency anemia and uncomplicated heterozygous thalassemia. RDW is elevated in former, while normal in later. 
Definitive tests are, however, required. If there is macrocytosis, RDW helps to distinguish between megaloblastic anemia and other causes of macrocytosis. RDW will be high in megaloblastic anemia while it will be normal in other causes. There is a useful utility of RDW for the laboratory staff as well. It can be used as a guidance to flag samples which need manual peripheral blood smear examination since elevated RDW may indicate red cell fragmentation, agglutination, or dimorphic red blood cell populations. Okay, folks, this going to be last slide, but it is important. So focus. As have been mentioned earlier, RDW along with MCV gives more meaningful clues and can help in narrowing the differential diagnosis of anemia. Now, let's see this utility for all possible causes of anemia. If MCV is low and RDW is high, possible diseases are iron deficiency anemia and sickle cell beta thalassemia. But with low MCV, if RDW is normal, the possibilities are anemia of chronic disease, heterozygous thalassemia, and hemoglobin E trait. If MCV is normal and there is high RDW, then the possible diseases are Early iron, vitamin B12, or folate deficiency, dimorphic anemia for example, iron and folate deficiency, or sideroblastic anemia, sickle cell disease, chronic liver disease, and myelodysplastic syndrome. Normal MCV and normal RDW combination may point toward anemia of chronic disease, acute blood loss or hemolysis, and anemia of renal disease. High MCV and high RDW are seen with folate or vitamin B12 deficiency, immune hemolytic anemia, and myelodysplastic syndrome. And lastly, high MCV but normal RDW are associated with aplastic anemia, chronic liver disease, chemotherapy, antivirals, and alcohol. And this is it for this video. Did you find it useful? If so, why not to subscribe to this channel and share with your friends as well. This will encourage us to continue our efforts and keep on posting new and useful content. Thank you.